YouTube family. This is your host Aaron here. This is Times with the Narcissist Explained. Uh, listen, I have an important topic I want to discuss today. This probably won't be too long of a video. It's going to be short, simple, sweet. I also have some scriptures to tie into this message. Basically, what I want to talk about is uh, the promised inheritance, right? There is a promised inheritance that was passed down to us from the Most High, all right? And therefore, we're going to break it down, starting with the definition of inheritance. There's a few definitions here, so y'all bear with me. It says here, the first definition says, something that is or may be inherited, okay? Two, the act of inheriting property, uh, the reception of genetic qualities by transmission from parent to offspring, mm -hmm. the acquisition of possession, condition, or trait from past generations. All right. Here's another definition. A valuable possession that is a common heritage from nature. Mm, that's a deep one. And number four says possession. All right. Now let's go to some scriptures here that'll help explain this better to you all. All right. We're going to come out of the book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 32. All right. So bear with me. All right. It says here. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 32. A good man slash woman leaves an inheritance to his children, his or her children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Therefore, let's dissect that for a second. According to this, even though we look at the wicked and they may have a lot of things that they have ill-gottenly gained, it is ours for the taking. It is the righteous possessions to have. The land, all of it, it belongs to the righteous. All right. Let's go to a next scripture that may help you guys see it clearly. We're going to come out of the book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 21. All right. So bear with me. All right. An inheritance, this is Proverbs 20, verse 21. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. So let's 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 dissect that. It says here, an inheritance may be gotten hastily. It may have gotten quick at the beginning, but at the end thereof shall not be blessed. So let's 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 break it down. I'm going to break it down as best as I can. There are people out here, they have done a lot of ill-gotten gains to get to where they are now. They have, where basically, I'm going to try to articulate this in the best way. Where you see corruption, they see opportunity, all right? Even if it means genocide, even if it means people will starve, even if it means many people are just going to be suffering heavily. Where you see corruption, they see opportunity. you will gotten gains. They got it hastily. An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end thereof shall not be blessed. So therefore, if you're doing it the right way, as you go there day by day, your inheritance will be truly a reward and a gift for you. It will be yours. And you didn't have to do it hastily it's not an ill-gotten gain it was inherited to you rightfully the righteous all right let's look at another scripture we're going to come out of the book of colossians chapter 1 verse 12 all right here we go the book of colossians chapter 1 verse 12 Thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. That's deep. That came out of the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 12. 
our journey and I, and I said this before go back look at your old baby pictures look at your teenage pictures see how much you have grown when it comes down to the universe we don't get to dictate how we grow however we're supposed to grow that's how we're supposed to grow this is why it's important to stay grounded in high vibration and not be upset because the truth be told even when things look dark even when things look messed up there's still growth happening it's leading you to your inheritance chosen ones you have to grow before you own you understand you have to grow before you own if the most high didn't care about you the most high wouldn't make you strong okay the most high wouldn't make you powerful in the spiritual realm you're probably so powerful that your words alone can just make things happen your thoughts alone can just make things happen but you can't do this here in this 3d plane because you know it's a it's a plane that has its limitations to it as you rise up into higher realms you rise above duality basically above good and evil therefore you're not bound between the good and evil you are above it you can command it all right i know it sounds crazy but this is the message i have to put out for you all today let's move forward let's look at another scripture all right we're going to come out of the book of matthew chapter 5 verse 5 oh here we go i know y'all know this one Here we go. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Huh? The land, as far as the eye can see, it belongs to the chosen ones. But there's a divine thing going on. There's there's moving parts happening. So when it's uh, when it's rightfully appointed the divine time, the righteous, the meek. The chosen ones shall inherit the earth. When you are chosen, you are not like them. You are not corrupt as them. Like I said before, where they see, where you see corruption, they see opportunity. And this is the difference between you and them. All right? It's corrupt to try to target someone for doing the right thing. It's corrupt to try to take away something that is rightfully theirs. But they're going to come in and steal and kill for it. And that's a violation of the universe. And when you're in violation, I don't care how much money you have. Just as high as you rise, just as quick you'll fall down. All right. And it says here, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Doing it the right way does pay off. You own the earth. Okay. You own everything. And you will lead and, and own it in a rightful way. You will make sure everybody has a fair share. The people that currently rule now, they don't want you to have a fair share. They don't want people to have a fair share. Matter of fact, they'll take the, the, the little $2 you got in your bank account, they'll take it right now and they won't even bat an eyelid. That's how corrupt they are. But you, when the time is right, you will own everything. Okay? We're moving into an age where this monetary system is going to be removed in a new age of love and advanced technology and you know some people say oh you know technology is going to be destroyed and we're just going to have to live like cavemen again that's not true when you talk about the age of Aquarius you're talking about technological advancement you're talking about higher consciousness higher emotional state of being I'm talking about dormant powers are being unlocked you're coming online. I'm telling you, man, I'm going to tell you something. There's times where I can just, okay, I might run into this person today. And then, boom, I run into this person. And I'm like, how did I know I was going to run into this person today? It's just something. It's like when you are divinely connected, divine shows you things. You really become a seer. You can see into the future. That's a superpower, man. Psychic abilities to see into the future. A lot of y'all been having that lately. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. All right, let's move on to the next scripture. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. We're going to come out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Here we go. Uh-huh, here we go. 
First Peter chapter one, verse four. We are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish, never be defiled, and never diminish. It is promised and preserved forever in the heavenly realm for you. Now, here's the thing. We have to lower our expectations of this system because we may be thinking our inheritance will come one way, but it's really another way, which is so magnificent. Not saying that you ain't going to have luxurious things here on this planet. It'll be, it's, it's, it, I'm, I'm sure there's going to come a time for that, but that's nothing compared to the inheritance that the Most High has for us in the higher realms when you make it past uh, leaving this realm and rising above into your true divinity. What an awesome life that has to be. And I really pray and, and hope to see every last one of you chosen ones there, you know, because that's where we that's where we belong. It's our inheritance. You understand? Let me let's reread that. We are reborn into a perfect inheritance as life goes on. We are being reborn through the trials and tribulations. We are being reborn. We are reborn into a perfect inheritance that can never perish. Mm. That means no reptilians, no crooks. None of that can perish that. It can never be defiled. It can't be taken from you. You understand? It can't be defiled. It will never be tainted. All right? And it will never diminish. That means it never runs out. It's infinite. Okay? Forever. Okay? Let that, let, like, like Country Wayne say, let that sizzle in your spirit. All right? <laughs> all right, let's go to the next scripture. We're going to go to Psalms 37 and 11. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Psalms 37 and 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth. And there it is again. We saw it in Matthew, right? Here it is again. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Okay? Peace. Don't y'all just love peace? There's people like that that are so low vibrational they can't enjoy peace. Because where you see peace, they see opportunity to try to take and do this and do that. They can't dwell in peace. You understand? They dwell in corruption. You dwell in peace, chosen ones. All right? And uh, I got one more scripture for you all. Psalms 37 and 29. All right, here we go. Here we go. And it's just that simple. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell in it forever. It belongs to us. It belongs to the righteous. It belongs to the chosen. And they can't stop that. Huh? They can't stop that. Now let me let me break some let me break this one thing down. This will probably open your eyes to a lot of things. You ever wonder why whenever the wicked they get certain things or rewards or material possessions nobody really bothers them nobody really harass them they get all the claps and praises but when you get a hint of a reward for your good work they try to come at you so hard here's why they get pissed because they know the truth about how the meek shall inherit the earth even if they don't know about your inheritance the spirit in them knows about your inheritance that's why a lot of times you ask them well, why did you attack me? A man tell you the truth, I don't even know. Because it's not them, it's the spirit in them. That 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 defiling entity that wants to sidetrack you and tear you down because they that thing and the army of the wicked don't want you to have your inheritance because they know the inheritance is yours. They know the inheritance is yours. And they will use anybody to try to stop you from getting there. How do they try to stop you? They try to make you get into some low vibrational behaviors, like smoking and drinking a lot, sleeping around a lot, thinking in a negative state of mind a lot. All of this is designed to stop you from receiving your inheritance, but they can't stop what's rightfully yours. You wanna know why? 
because you're a chosen one. Every obstacle they try to put in your way, you rose above it. Every single one of them, every single enemy, you have defeated. Every single enemy. Sit down and think about this for a second. Did any of the enemies of your past, did they ever succeed? Them co-workers at your job, did they succeed? I guarantee you that the same place doing the same thing, just bullshitting around, being low vibrational uh, serpent belly crawlers like they are. You understand? Your inheritance is your inheritance. And no matter what they try to do, what they try to use for evil, it's only for your highest good. You understand? All right? They f here's another thing. They feel our glow up. They feel our come up. They are not sure how it's going to come, but they feel it. That's why people act strange around you. That's why a lot of times you have a lot of friends and they switch up on you. It's because it's like something inside of them. They're being controlled because the forces of evil in the spiritual realm does not want you to have your inheritance. Do you understand? Do you understand the bigger picture now? They don't want you to have your inheritance because they want you to believe that it doesn't pay to be righteous. They want you to believe that it doesn't pay to be a good person. It doesn't pay to show love. And it actually does. It pays in a major way, actually. As we read before, abound in peace forever, okay? Inherit the earth, okay? There's a scripture that talks about how the heaven and earth will become one. And that's the time, man, I tell you, I had this dream a while back. I saw all the stars right in our sky. I'm talking about they was all around us. Like, <clears throat> the stars came down, okay? And it was a different kind of vibe. And then there were, like, different species of benevolent, loving beings that ruled over the earth, okay? Everything has a specific time an appointed time for everything to happen you can't miss your inheritance you understand all you have to do is don't allow these forces to get you to do low vibrational stuff sorry if my voice sound a little crazy but i hope y'all are understanding where i'm coming from the name of the game is to drag you down to their level of vibration and frequency so they can take you that's the name of the game and you overcame every single one of them you're not a drinker anymore you don't cause trouble. You learn from your mistakes. You know how important it is to be the light. How peaceful it is for your mental well-being, your emotional well-being, and your spiritual well-being. Right? They can feel your come up. This is why people act strange around you. They can feel your inheritance. Do you understand? The forces of evil don't want you to have it. That's why they try to make your life difficult. They're trying to make you feel bad for not having certain things because you don't drive a Lamborghini because you don't own a mansion. Okay, but the earth belongs to you. It doesn't matter. If you don't have it now, you will have it later. And matter of fact, uh, uh, it's almost about that time to own what it is that is rightfully yours. Okay, you earned that. It's yours. It's your inheritance. It's your birthright. Okay. Listen, this is Times with the Narcissist Explained. I hope y'all enjoyed the message. I love y'all. Y'all please be safe out there. And we'll chop it up again soon, y'all. We'll chop it up again soon. All right. Bye-bye now.